many of us use conferencing systems like Zoom and others to produce interviews that we broadcast live and later on VOD. And often you can't control the quality of the video coming in from the remote participant. In this interview with John Wilson, president and COO of Telestream, who approved the use of his video in this video, we see that because he's in front of a bright background, the webcam shut down the brightness on his face, which causes a condition called backlighting. And in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to fix this in Adobe Premiere Pro using Lumetri Color and Lumetri Scopes and how to turn this into this. So there are two aspects to applying the effects. One is applying the effect and configuring it. And first, you have to apply the effect and create a mask so that only this portion of the video is going to be affected. And let's go back into the edit workspace to do that. I'm going to apply Lumetri Color here and go into Effect Controls. And now I create the mask and apply the mask over John's region so that the effect is only applied to that region. And when Premiere Pro creates the mask, they put a slight feather on it so you won't see a stark line here between where the effect is applied and where it's not applied. So now we've applied the mask. Let's go back into color. What I absolutely love about working in Adobe Premiere Pro's color space are the available scopes. And this particular scope, which is the waveform scope, and it's set to Luma, which means we're only seeing the brightness pixels because color is fine here and fine here as well. So what this shows us are the brightness levels of the pixels in the frame on the IRE scale from 0 IRE for black pixels to 100 IRE for white pixels. So when we look at my side of the video, everything looks okay. Or, you know, yeah, this is probably too bright. I would adjust that or would, did adjust that in the final video before I shipped it. But we see the major problems here in John's video. And we see that there are no pixels approaching the 100 IRE level because everything was clamped down because of the background. We also see that there's no pixels around zero IRE, so the blacks are going to look a little bit faded. But the biggest problem is the exposure on the face. And when you're exposing a face, you want the exposure level to be around 70 IRE if the face is Caucasian, which obviously it is in, in both cases here. And it's always fun to kind of move the slider because then you see movement, which tells you where the face is. And here we see the bright spots up here are way up here, which are too high. And that's my fault with lighting. Didn't do a good job there. But more importantly, we see that John's face is way down here. And that's why it's so dark. So job number one is to boost this to around 70 IRE. And then we want to look at making sure the whitest whites are up here, which won't be a problem. But more importantly, that the blackest blacks are down here. And I'm just going to use the exposure control. There's dozens of ways to do this, and this is just how I do it. And watching the face in the waveform, we see now the face is up to 70 IRE. And what we've done effectively is crush the whites. We've lost all detail in the shades in the background because we've pushed all the brightness levels up. But that really doesn't matter because there's no detail we care about people seeing here. And we really care more about getting consistency between the, the facial brightness here and the facial brightness there. And then if we look down here, we see that some of the blacks have been pushed off 0 IRE. So we're just going to drag this a little bit down this way. And we can see that mostly in the zippered area and the background area. So here's where we started. And now we're getting a little bit better contrast. And highlights up here, you could start to adjust. You know, we see that there's a lot of bunching right around 100 IRE. That's the, the whites that I said we blew out. You could try and drop those a little bit. But whenever you do that, you're going to drop the facial value as well. And lots of little dials and levers you can mess with. Uh, you know, basically, you just want to make sure you have some pixels here, this in this range, and some pixels here. And then you can always see where you started, see where you finished. So I would say mission accomplished here from a brightness perspective. What I'm seeing, though, is a little bit of softness in John's image. And that's what I want to fix next. It's definitely secondary to the color that we just addressed. But I want to show you the unsharp mask as well. So what we're going to do here, and let me zoom in. I'll zoom in in a second to see what I'm talking about. And then we're going to use what's called the unsharp mask because that gives you controls that you can used to adjust where and how the sharpness filter is is shown and or applied, I, I guess I should say. 
and effect controls here. Obviously we have the same issue with only sharpening John's region. Click this down here, here, here. And now let's zoom in and you'll see what I mean from a softness perspective. So we've got Unsharp Mask applied and the three controls we're going to mess with the most are amount, which is obviously the amount of the adjustment, radius, which is how far the adjustment goes from edges spotted in the video by, by Adobe Premiere Pro, and then the threshold, which gives us the ability to set areas where the effect is applied. So this is the softness that I was talking about, and I'm going to adjust these two primarily, and I'm going to boost this, and you can see you know, it's already up to around 350, and if we go on off, this is where we were, this is where we are now, and then if we want to adjust the radius and see what that does for us, you know, obviously if you go too far, you get a pretty bizarre result. In this case, we may not, we actually may not need any adjustment of the radius. So let's get a little bit, and Here's where we started, here's where we finished. And you see the blurriness down here in particular is gone, the blurriness on the side of his face is gone. And if we go back to full screen, everything looks a lot more normal. So here's where we started, here's where we finished. Again, in the, in the video that I actually uploaded to YouTube, I darkened this a little bit and adjusted the brightness levels a little bit down, but most of the work was done with John. And that's how you adjust brightness and sharpness with Adobe Premiere Pro, particularly using the masks available in all filters.